This conference will now be recorded. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I want to take a moment to uh, thank everyone for coming out and uh, logging in to this uh, series of webinars, which we are referring to as Automotive Digitization and Technology. Are we, are we ready? 1.0. This is going to be a introductory uh, view of the, uh, the landscape of technology and digitization in the vehicles. And really at the end of it all, um, with this introductory offering, what I want you to do is ask yourself, um, are we really ready for what the future will bring? You're gonna find a few things uh, from this introduction to vehicle tech and gig, um, and you know, uh, gigafactory type digitization. Uh, these are some of the verbiage that we'll use. You're gonna hear IoT, you're gonna hear AI, EV, all right? And we're gonna look into um, how these are gonna affect us, these verbiages or acronyms that I've just mentioned, because they're coming. They're already here in some vehicles. And this is the decade that they will all flourish when it comes to automotive um, technology. So let's move right along. And um, we'll take a look. So this is the repair professional that we often see in most of our webinars. I just like his tie. I got to be honest with you. That's why he's always there. But let's take a look at some of the few things that when it comes to technology and the giga world and digitization, what are some of the things that our repair professional, which is you and your team, what we deal with day to day, okay? Customers. Uh, you know, the customers want their vehicles back to pre-loss condition. Let me tell you something you didn't know already, right? But in the world of technology, the giga world and digitization, when we say that we want our cars back to pre-loss condition, that means they want their Waze app that is built into their uh, hardware. They want that working and synchronized. They want to make sure that their Microsoft systems can synchronize to their Android phone. They want to make sure that Apple Play still has great connectivity and the personal, the, the lifestyle connectivity, meaning anything, you can bring an iPad, an iPhone, any sort of iProduct into your vehicle and it will automatically sync to the Apple CarPlay. For those of us that have uh, General Motors vehicles, we wanna make sure that our Wi-Fi, our internal Wi-Fi is still working post repair. So I got to be quite frank with you. This is uh, this 2020, uh, this new decade that we're going to be entering, ushering in a decade of vehicle technology and digitization and pre-loss condition no longer means make sure that my lights are pointing in the same direction when I drive out of the, car, out of the shop and make sure my paint matches are old old and tired news when it comes to pre-loss condition well our bosses um they want to make money now whether you are your own boss or whether it might seem like in my situation where you have a significant other who's the boss um bosses want income bosses want revenue Bosses want to see the repair professional and his or her activities showing up with a positive on the P&L and the balance sheet. With uh, today's vehicles, diagnostics, um, the charging of calibrations, these are all things that uh, a shop does not want to absorb. And, um, you know, does not want to have to pay out without remuneration. So, you know, uh, bringing your vehicle, bringing a 2018 Honda Fit where you changed a right front door 
bringing that to the dealerships you can calibrate um, can be upwards of 200 to 300 dollars. Uh, we need to be making sure that that's captured. We need to make sure that we're charging it up front so we're not penalized on supplements. We need to make sure we have the documentation to do that. And we need to make sure that our bosses are getting the uh, markup that they require. Insurers. Um, I'm not even going to get into severity and how much your average cost per claim is and, and the cycle time because those are all expected of us. Okay? But the fact of the matter is, but it doesn't matter what body shop you're in. Uh, if your system isn't in tune, you will have a higher cycle time and a, and a lesser non-profitable severity. Okay. But without beating up on those KPIs, the insurance companies today, they're focusing not just on the value chain, who is us. They're focusing on how they can save and gain in the customer from the customer in a giga world. All right. We're talking about telematics. Uh, one of our biggest partners in DGIG has the Justo telematic, which if you sign a new policy with them, they will give you the option of putting in some of their IoT, the Internet of Things technology, which we'll discuss in just a moment. What it does is record the amount of times you drive, start, stop, um, the artificial intelligence, the AI, which we'll discuss further, that measures your, your driving habit. Now, they'll give you a five or some odd percent discount just for letting them put this in. But if your driving habits are one that the underwriters disagree with, then that'll also show up on your uh, uh, monthly payout as well for your insurance. If you are minimizing the amount you're driving, and following rules of the road, which the JUSTO will be able to tell them, you'll also see the benefit from that as well, because they want more of you on the road, and they want to be insuring more people like you, okay? Um, you know, the tracker, it's drawing from your habits, your kilometers driven, and it provides innovative tools for them to deploy a cost reduction strategy, all right? We can charge you only by usage, you seem to drive 16 hours a week. This is what 16 hours of insurance would cost you. Okay. And then there's our technicians. Um, you know, I don't think right now there's any technician who's completely ready at, at any of our sites for what is going to be coming down the pipeline. Um, we need to help them. We need to help them be more accurate. We need to help them with diagnostics. Um, you know, some of the tools that they're going to need, the proper scanning tools. Okay, we'll get into some of that later on. But they're going to need OE procedures. They're going to need to know what and how to use a dynamic calibration tool. And if we can't get them to the stuff ourselves, they're going to need a third-party assistance. Okay, here's just a list of some of the things that we're going to discuss today. Some of you may already know what they are. Some of you may not, but we're going to dive right into them. All right. Uh, some of the terms that you're going to need to know, not just today, but in the future. The EV is the electric vehicle. Okay. Um, electric vehicle is exactly what it sounds like. It's a vehicle that is either Proportionately or fully operated via battery. So your hybrid vehicle is an electric vehicle, but operates in combustion and operates with um, the electric battery. Um, some companies like BioSolar, um, Tesla, they're even flirting with the opportunity of possibly powering the... Uh, Solar, uh, solar uh, um, charging, which is uh, pretty cool in itself. AI, artificial intelligence. Um, essentially, what this is, artificial intelligence, is, is this is the key to the autonomous vehicle, okay? It enables the autonomous vehicle to transform, to take charge. Uh, it allows them to 
redesign the vehicle where needed, they will get millions and millions of points of data per minute on what the road conditions, what the vehicle's like, what its passengers are like, who's comfortable, who's not. And that will feed info to the manufacturer to share with either the insurance, the government for in infrastructure in improvements and uh, allow them to uh, improve the vehicle themselves based on their own data. Uh, ML is an acronym for machine learning. The ability for a computer, which is AI, to continuously learn. So artificial intelligence for estimating. I'm gonna make this uh, right, I'm gonna bring this right close to home in our business. They, I'm currently looking into artificial intelligence for estimating to help us become faster, more accurate, and allow us for um, laser speed, uh, lightning speed response online uh, to a customer based on sending, the, sending us photos. As machine learning for artificial intelligence, as the system pick, receives more pictures, the, the machine learning aspect is the fact that the technology improves on writing estimates itself. From one to a million pictures, they will continuously improve and improve and improve on the estimates. I think the best of humans, but I can't promise you that any of our appraisers, nor myself, and I like to think that I write a good estimate, I don't think that I can get to the point of zero supplement all the time, 100%, even by looking at a million photos and writing a million estimates. Okay? IoT, the Internet of Things. Um, I have from uh, Wikipedia um, and uh, the definition there. What I'll tell you is the Internet of Things is exactly what it sounds like, the Internet of Things. Apple CarPlay, um, um, BlackBerry and Amazon joining together to create an automotive system for the cars. Um, Microsoft powering Ford vehicles. Those are all examples of the Internet of Things. Connectivity, lifestyle connectivity, okay? Uh, driving and saying, um, Alexis, order me a, a tall venti blonde, you know, a tall blonde from Starbucks. It will place the order to the local Starbucks in your area of traffic and will show up on your dash as to how to get to that exact Starbucks even if you've never been there, okay? 5G, you might be saying, Dom, what does 5G got to do with cars? 5G has everything to do with cars because none of this, what we're going to talk about today, will be able to happen without 5G. And a lot of people, you may have heard 3G, maybe see 4G showing up on your phone and hear a lot about 5G coming. Some of us don't even know what the G or the five or the three stand for, okay? So here's a quick example. 5G stands for the fifth generation in, cellu in cellular wireless. So 1G was the $1,200 lamp that we held walking around. We didn't even have one. It was probably in the 80s where it happened. 2G was the fact that a car was built into your your, your car, a phone was built into your car and cost you $7 per minute, okay? 3G would have been the introduction of BlackBerry. 4G would have been Apple and Android coming to the scene. And 5G, Huawei's probably gonna be the best phone currently. LG possibly, and Apple and Android will get there. Last but certainly not least, the autonomous vehicle. Well, you can read the definition for yourself. And the autonomous vehicle is the Jetsons becoming reality. All right. So the decade of the electric vehicle. Some of the things that we need to know, Tesla, I'm a big fan of Elon Musk. I'm a big fan of his company. And I'd love to say that one day I can own uh, one of his vehicles. He is the industry leader of the electric vehicle. And what, what I admire about him about the most is that he had a vision of what he wanted to do. And so many people told him, you're crazy. So many people told him, you're going to fail. 
And so many people made a lot of money last month when his stock reached $901 per share from 176 in June. Okay. So uh, Tesla is the trailblazer, I consider them, uh, for electric vehicles. And they will continue to be because the big four, three, four, five, and 10, they're so far behind right now. Maybe Audi and Volkswagen with their ID models and possibly BMW with the i8 i3 their, or their i version i3 4 5 6 7 8 um can compete with tesla right now i have this little green vehicle here that on the left side of the screen why that's there is because the electric vehicle is emerging so fast that as of january uh 2019 any new construction homes are actually coming with an ev charger built into the garage um, not to say that you need to buy a new home to have an electric vehicle, but um, for today's 2020 Prius, um, anything that is made by Tesla and, the, and, and uh, his company at Elon Musk there and Tesla, uh, quite frankly, anything that's coming through 218 and above will need a particular source of power. And uh, you can purchase that for $10,000 in and around. Uh, also, with the electric vehicles, where how it affects us the most is the technology and the substrate. There, I'm showing you a vehicle which is 70% aluminum um, and 20% ultra high strength steel, and 10% is actually uh, what one would call shop supplies, but they are expensive noise vibration foam um sealers um it's just all those types of cosmetic uh glues that we would use are actually we would use them sometimes maybe i shouldn't say this on a webinar but there's not one person who hasn't done this before use some of those bonding adhesives to uh, make a belt molding stick well now they're using it to make the metal stick okay the emergence of the uh, autonomous vehicle. Um, you see all those vehicles on the road with that green light around them, outside of it being a pretty cool picture. That is the internet of things. That is the machine learning and, uh, and, and artificial intelligence working and communicating vehicle to vehicle. That's another thing that IoT, the internet of things, is going to allow not just for personal connectivity, but V to V, vehicle to vehicle connectivity. A BMW and a Ford would understand exactly how far away they are from each other and what the consequences could be if one sped up or slowed down at the wrong time. The World Automakers Association states that by 2040, which is not too far away, okay, by 2040, the amount of collisions will, will, will reduce by 80%. So let's look at any of our collision centers. Okay, not in a COVID-19 environment, but let's look in November 2019. Let's take 10 cars in our shop and put eight of them back on the road. That's simply because they won't be involved in an accident. We're going to need to learn how to monetize that. We're going to need to learn how to make more money on those two out of 10 cars. And I'm going to be working very closely with our operations team and our franchisees on, on creating training programs and learning on how to monetize the serviceability of the electric vehicle and the autonomous vehicle, um, not just the collision. In the middle, there's a pretty cool picture. That's what Tesla says is his cars can be by 2021. You have no brake pedals, you have no steering wheel, you almost don't have a radio because everything is uh, connected by voice or by internet. And then there's on the left side is the exterior of what that same vehicle would look like. At the bottom, um, there is a list of companies that are getting involved. Um, for those that um, you know tend to look at markets outside of the collision, when I start talking about BlackBerry, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, NVIDIA, um, AMD, 
advanced micro devices, um, Waymo, Uber, Lyft, Toyota. These are all companies that are looking to create their own AI and assist in the emergence of the autonomous vehicle. Okay, there's a lot of money being pushed toward this area. The mayor of Toronto, the um, uh, Senior um, Tory, just approved eight million dollars project to create autonomous vehicle lanes in the city of Toronto. All right, in the downtown core. So we have cyclists that are going to have their own lanes. We have autonomous vehicles that will have their own lanes. This is being taken very, very serious. ADAS is one of the other things that the internet, IoT, uh, will allow us to deploy further. So ADAS is the Advanced Driver Assistance Systems. Okay. Uh, on the top left, you'll see a picture of a 2018 Audi A8. That vehicle at the Las Vegas car show was uh, recorded, and you can find this on YouTube. Don't take it just for me. On you, if you Google uh, Las Vegas Auto Show 2018 Audi A8, you will see this vehicle with no driver in it doing 60 kilometers per hour around a track. Okay, that goes to show you it's ready, it's here, regulatory. Um, allowance is the only thing, and I quite frankly, regulatory allowance. But the red, the regulation from the government hasn't happened because us as humans are not ready for it. Okay, at the bottom picture, you'll see uh, Google, their subsidiary called Waymo. Waymo has a 2012 Lexus there, and uh, that satellite sitting on the top of it is called a LiDAR detector light detection and range. Um, to let you know what that is, your Waze and Google apps that we use to tell us where to go, I need it because I have no idea where I'm going all the time. Those are powered by light detection and range, LiDAR. And then there's radar. So, um, you know, LiDAR does a very good job at detecting the movement of people, the it, it, LIDAR will be able to read further ahead than radar. Uh, however, with such a, you using Tesla as an example and Elon Musk, Elon Musk actually swears that radar is the way to go, where nine out of 10 manufacturers are saying it's LIDAR, okay? And radio detection and ranging. So um, Elon Musk feels that the radar in his Tesla will allow him to re allow the vehicle to react better because it is finding um, solid objects and stopping vehicles ahead of them. However, radar hasn't been so successful at identifying someone jaywalking, okay, where LIDAR will give you a better opportunity to see that. So these are the two areas of IoT and AI, artificial intelligence, and machine learning that are in vehicles right now, okay? Um, and here, this is, this is uh, LIDAR, radar, all at work at the same time. This is a, the, the graph on the left is a 2016 Honda Civic. I'm not gonna read them out to you, but there are all the different types of sensors, ADAS, LIDAR, radar and cameras that are um, that are being used uh, in this Civic to ensure that you are parking appropriately. 360 degree cameras, those are also powered the same way your um, Waze and Google Maps is. Here's just a quick example of how many vehicles are actually equipped with this. Anything from Acura, right through your, your North American, German, exotic, and Asian vehicles, all have access to this type of technology. AI and machine learning. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the areas, so I mentioned a couple of the companies 
earlier. Drive.ai, Tractable, Volkswagen investing heavily. Uh, Waymo is a subsidiary of Google. NVIDIA, massive company creating semiconductors, um, wires and chips for all of this to, uh, to happen. Honda, if I haven't mentioned them already, dumping a lot of money, billions and billions of dollars into uh, AI and machine learning. One of the, some of the stuff about AI and machine learning that I think we need to understand as repairs is the driving features. Quite frankly, you know, this is probably, um, you know, the, guy, the guy's got the vehicle in self-driving mode. He seems to be re reading a, co a copy of Collision Repair Mag. He's probably reading an article put out by our CEO, Paul. Um, you know, cloud services. As I mentioned earlier, um, Alexa, order me a venti blonde from Starbucks and please calculate uh, timing and proximity. That gets done. It already has a copy. You enter your copy of your credit card or PayPal or Google Plus, and it will pay for it on your behalf from your vehicle. Okay. Um, insurance companies, like I mentioned, Intact has their version. Uh, DGIG, who I know personally, has the um, the uh, Justo. Um, you know, the manufacturers are they have complete control. The moment that the vehicle communicates, because the vehicle's making a million decisions a minute. The AI and machine learning are making a million decisions a minute. It could quite possibly notify the manufacturer before it got into an accident. Seconds before the accident actually happens, it can communicate. At that point, once a collision happens, it instantly uploads all the damaged parts and a list to the manufacturer. Before you're done jolting your head back from the collision, you could possibly be getting a version of an OnStar call from the manufacturer, letting them know that we, we identified the damage to your vehicle, we have a collision center and a replacement vehicle set up for you, uh, Uber has dispatched an autonomous vehicle to bring you home, the insurance company and the collision center possibly both lost control of this car, okay? Um, you know, uh, the manufacturers and insurers I mentioned earlier will identify habits. You know, if you're driving your Porsche like you stole it, Porsche might reserve the option not to lease you a vehicle again. Remember, th th those are the areas that they're going. Okay, uh, you see here, the, the machine, machine learning iRobot is driving the vehicle for you. This is the, what see, uh, Cars of Tomorrow will look like. We'll have full, two four-seated seats and possibly a 50-inch screen in the car. Lots of trunk space for you in the front and back because there won't be an engine. And we will move from our living room to our vehicle. Ask yourself, how will this affect the aviation industry? Is Dominic really going to go and buy four tickets to fly to Florida when I can be that comfortable and tilt our seats back and have the same nap that I would have in the plane in my car? Things to think about. No cost for gas. Reserve my charging station uh, automatically through the car. IOT. One of the big things here is connectivity. Vehicle monitoring. So it'll tell you, you know, IoT will be able to provide you, uh, Ford is offering it to you now. Lifestyle connectivity. Uh, I'm at my uh, brother's house and it seems to be snowing really bad outside. Paul, it's been a blast having a coffee with you. I pick up my phone, I press start and my vehicle started up for me already, all right? Um, you can remote link, you can text from your vehicle, email, all while in vehicle. This is just the start of IoT for automobiles, okay? Um, 5G towers are gonna be massive. The more 5G towers, the more the vehicle will be able to do for you, okay? And you see all in the top left screen, that's what the manufacturers envision. 
all the IoT doing for you, setting up your meetings, communicating that Dom's having a webinar, reminding you that Dom's going to have a webinar, and possibly allow you to launch the webinar on your screen while you're in the car. You don't need your laptop anymore. That's where we're going with IoT, Internet of Things, and our automobiles. 5G, mentioned it a couple times already. Here, here's a quick stat for you. Will 5G transform the auto sector? 5G by 2035 will be a $2.4 trillion economic output. So if we need 5G to help power the EVs better, AI, the machine learning, IoT, I think 2.5 trillion might be an understatement, all right? Um, Qualcomm currently is the leader of 5G. They haven't launched it yet, but they're the first ones to have it in the state. And I'm pretty sure that Rogers will be the first to launch it here, okay? Uh, vehicle uh, to pedestrian, you know, uh, the vehicle will be able to notify the pedestrian that I'm coming. Even if you're, if you're jaywalking, the vehicle might be able to text you stating that what you're doing is against the law. Vehicle to vehicle communication. Understanding who's going where so we don't get into an accident. Vehicle to network connectivity. Oh man, I'm gonna be in the car, I'm gonna miss Dom's webinar. Cause I always love joining them. They're always such, such a wealth of knowledge. Boom, webinars on your screen in your car. Vehicle to infrastructure. Vehicle will understand that it's an amber light. That means I will stop. Vehicle will communicate to the government when no light is on. So dispatch police as there's no cross light working at such and such intersection. So I guess the next question is what do we do? You know, John Cena in the bottom left corner there, that's my reaction. Some of you might be uh, taking the same look as that child or that quirky look and I forget his actor's face. So what do we do? Because this is not something that we can just put under the carpet because it's gonna be here before we're done our time in this industry. And I speak to my first generation owner operators who are currently doing a fantastic job in your collision centers. But we're gonna need to be a little better tomorrow than we were today, because we're gonna experience all this stuff that I've been talking about before we're done with this industry. So what do we do? OEM certifications, people. The only thing that's the first, it's, it's gonna be expensive and it's gonna be mandatory. I don't see, I don't even feel comfortable fixing a vehicle jacked up with IoT, AI, uh, and EVs without all the proper training, okay? I'm working on doing that right now. Um, you know, it's uh, ICAR is the first thing that I want us all to be committed to. And I say it now because it's gonna happen regionally. Um, you know, I'm looking through BRIT programs, Bring Your Own IT, where we have all four major players in our body shop between Refinish, Body, um, um, tech and owners, um, estimators, I mean, and owners, um, participating in regional uh, classes. Uh, as soon as I get uh, ICAR, which they'll probably have a lot of time on their hands now, considering uh, the amount of movement in body shops. Uh, as soon as I get everyone registered as a simplicity um, um, set up on the ICAR website, I will help each owner and operator log in regionally and get them their staff set up. The most important thing to get an OEM certification is the ICAR Gold Class. After that, I'm also working on getting us financing uh, for all of the tools and equipment that'll be needed. But it's an investment now that we'll need. It's not even, you know, it's not even an if, and, or but anymore. It's something that we'll definitely need. Here are some of the certifications. We're gonna be going after the uh, CCIAP and, and CCC, okay? Um, that will give you about 70% of the, 
of the certifications that you need uh, for mainstream vehicles. The, the bonus here is that there's nothing that you need for CCIAP that won't get you certified with CCC, okay? We're going to be working on getting both of them. One has another manufacturer, the other one doesn't, but all of the requirements and training are the same. Uh, General Motors, for example, is the same program as CCC and CCIAP, but here's the catch. You need to have Mitchell estimating and you need to have the Mitchell scanner. I know this because I needed to get our East York location certified because we're the uh, Toronto exclusive repair facility for the Maven uh, car share, which is um, General Motors version of car sharing. All right. And then there is the uh, Pro First uh, Honda program. OEM position statements. I say they're important. I don't mean for them to be your lifeline because if you're gonna go and shove these position statements in an insurer's face every day, uh, you're going to be, that's adversarial and um, will not put you in proper standings with your insurance partners. Now that might sound hypocritical considering I just told you all the stuff, <laughs> I call it stuff all the IT that we're gonna be coming across, but um, we need to be educating. Uh, we need to add, uh, we need to educate, and we need to document, all right? Um, our operations team will be having more courses on educating people on exactly how to do this. Pre and post scanning. Uh, you know what, we all know what pre and post scan is, or maybe we don't. Uh, what is pre and post scan? Listen, pre-scan is the process of analyzing any errors and faults that you may have prior to disassembling the vehicle. Post-scan is finding out if any other DTCs, diagnostic trouble codes, came up throughout the repair, okay? And calibration, this is where a lot of shops get confused. Post scan and calibration are not the same thing. To calibrate a vehicle is to aim, to set up modules, to relearn, to zero point calibrate, making sure that weight is right back to equilibrium. Uh, initiation or a calibration is required post the removal or installation or any other thing that's being done in order to make the vehicle. Um, whole again. When we're talking about calibration, there are two different types of calibration. There's a static calibration and a dynamic calibration. Uh, a static calibration is something that requires targets and an OEM tool. A uh, quick example, any Honda, any line of Honda from the fit all the way up to the um, their massive truck, which I think escapes me, what it's called right now. If you're replacing the mirror on the right side, which has the built-in camera, or if you're replacing the door, and essentially, if you are in either mirror, you will need to send it back to Honda for the target and scan tool calibrating. However, a dynamic calibration is something that can be done with a proper scan tool uh, in your collision center. So uh, when I say a proper scan tool, I say, I'm gonna use one as an example. Uh, the MDOE, that is a tool made by Bosch on behalf of um, Mitchell. And uh, it is required to scan and calibrate any GM vehicle. Um, and it is something that will dynamically calibrate. So your headlight, can be calibrated, a tire sensor can be calibrated, body control modules can be calibrated through a dynamic calibration. Something that only requires connectivity, no hard objects, like a target or uh, sensors. Um, OEM research, massive, massive. Um, it used to be something that the boutique shops did. 
Uh, now, if we're not using, and you should have all probably received by now a phone call from uh, All Data. Perfect timing, right? Uh, just when uh, when seventy percent of claims are reducing. Um, I made the agreement with great intention is to make sure that we're all doing the right things the right way at the right time. Um, we can have one-off discussions privately uh, offline about that, but I feel that all data is the best tool. It's come a long way. It's going to help us provide safe repairs, OEM compliant repairs. We're going to be looking at our, our, our uh, technician safety. It gives us all the uniform procedure pages for compliance. It'll provide us with static and dynamic calibration requirements. And guess what? It also increases profitability. Not a bad thing at all either. Okay. So that is, I think, a lot for an introduction to vehicle technology. Um, I hope it was enough. Next week, or later on this week, I'll be sending out another webinar for next week, which will be Vehicle Technology 2.0. And this was an introduction to AI, uh, machine learning, ML, IoT, ADAS, uh, 5G, EV, how they all come together for um, vehicle tech. Next week, we're going to deep dive into how it affects you at the shop a lot more. And I got to ask yourself, because originally, I, I need you to ask yourself, actually, because uh, let me just get back to this original screen. I think that that would be a good thing for us to look at. Let me just get back up here. And I need you to ask yourself, with everything that we just saw, with the automotive digitization and technology, are we ready? Are we ready for this as a network? Are we ready at our stores right now? And I'll ask you to voice your opinion and ask any questions that you may have. Wow. Okay. So uh, I appreciate, um, prob this is probably Ronnie. Uh, at Ottawa Airport. Um, I'm going to take, I'm going to break down your questions step by step. Number one, okay, because you've got quite a few. Uh, if technicians will need to know how to follow OEM procedures and take more steps to ensure proper repair, will insurance companies and estimating systems reflect the appropriate labor times for these extra steps? Man, I can always count on you for a bang on question, you know that? Um, so this is the beauty about all data. All data actually gives you the manufacturer's required time to install. So let's use an airbag deployment on the 2020 Chevy Cruze, okay? You're going to go, and, and this is how all data is the Google for collision repair. So you enter your, your VIN number, because we want to know exactly what your car you're dealing with. Then in the search area, labor times for airbag deployment. It will give you every single airbag module and everything else that may need to be replaced. And it will give you the exact dollar value of the part. So we eliminate now contacting our parts vendors to make sure that we're leveling up our, uh, our, our pricing to reduce our, our supplement count. And then it'll give you the revised labor. So if they say replacing the module is 1.2, but all data says it's 2.1, I would manually change it. And then you have to save that article as a PDF and add it to your upload and put notes, document, document, document. I don't care if you add six lines underneath that addition but make sure you're clearly outlining and referencing exactly what article you got it from and make sure it's in your, in your PDF. We haven't used all data across the board yet, but I can reassure you that they're going to have a really hard time uh, saying no to us. Okay. Hopefully that helps you. So in uh, that was a long winded answer because you got me really jacked up. 
about the question. But to say yes, they will pay for it. We have to document it, and all data will help us do that. Uh, part two of the question. Do you think there will be a rollout of certification grants by insurance companies or other organizations in the automotive industry to encourage shops to get certified? Um, I got to be honest, you, you know what, You're, you come back to back jacks with these beautiful questions. Number one, no, I didn't think it would happen. I didn't think that insurance companies or ICAR or AIA would give us compensation for doing it. However. I think that by the time we're done COVID-19, I think there will be. I don't know who it is. I don't know what your organization, whether it be the insurance company who says, we'll add 10% per your estimate, or we'll change your labor rates. If you're ICAR or certified by the OE, you can charge X amount. If you're not, you charge this amount. And if you have none of the tools or training, you basically get like one third of what the labor rate is. So I could see that possibly happening. I could see ICAR, AIA, or CCIF saying that we're going to give a grant or a comp X amount of dollars per shop that gets certified. So now, because COVID-19 is going to change the landscape of what we're doing, and I wouldn't be shocked at all, quite frankly, if that did happen. Um. What will a shop in the future have to look like or what kind of equipment will they have to carry to ensure a proper repair? That's a very good question and you're opening the door for um, vehicle technology and digitization 2.0, which I'm looking to have for next week at the same time. Um, so I will answer all those questions for you at that time. Uh, is there equipment worth purchasing today to get ahead of the competition? I got to be honest with you. Don't buy anything yet. Yes, there's all kinds of there's all kinds of tools you can get. I already have two different vendors pricing it out, and uh, we're going to use our strength in numbers as buying power. I don't want you to go and buy anything yourself, and I don't want any of our sister and brother stores to buy anything on their own. I'm looking to get financing right now for all the network at a very good rate. It's different when you call your bank and say, I'd like to get a line of credit to go and buy $60,000 worth of equipment. And it's different when I call a bank and say, I have 40 locations that are looking to become OEM certified and each shop may need $60,000 each, right? So it's quite different when we go and use our strength in numbers. Now, can I use that to get the loan? Yes. Can I use that type of pressure, pure pressure, 40, 45 stores to reduce the line of credit or the loan cost? Yes. I'll tell them, guys, we're prime plus one. Are you kidding me here? I'm buy I got 40 stores that are going to come and sign off with you. Okay. Uh, the other side of the bridge from the vendor side, are you going to get a better deal going to um, uh, pro spot and buying the welders and everything yourself? Or is it better if I contacted ProSpot and Spinazzi out of Italy, okay, and said, listen, I got 45 stores that are all looking to be OE certified. This is the list of equipment we need. I need your best price on the table. Come to me once because I'm not calling you twice. They're going to sharpen their pencils very, very much so, okay? So, yes, there's tools to buy. No, I don't want you to do it yet. Uh, I, and I don't even want anybody thinking about the equipment until we get the hardest things done. That's to get ICAR certified. I need this entire network ICAR certified. Everyone can go and blow 100 grand each. But if we're not ICAR certified, you're not even going to get the certification after you blew the money. So I need everyone to lock in. And you know I'm going to put some pressure on ICAR to get us all set up under simplicity so I can help you guys manage your accounts. Um, but we need to we need to get the ICAR certifications done first. Uh, if vehicles become more complex, not if when, will shops have to pick certain makes to repair? So such as specializing in German, Japanese, etc. Um, okay, let me stop the question right there. Yeah, there's a lot of people having this conversation. There's networks 
that are having this conversation. There's multi-shop operators that are having this conversation. And there's independents asking if we should do one or the other. Um, I don't think that we should be specializing at all. And I'll tell you why. One of the bonuses about this OEM certification is unless you're spending half a million dollars uh, to become a BMW, Mercedes, Mercedes or German uh, approved store, all the other seven out of 10 mainstream brands all require the same stuff, same tools, same equipment, same sealers, um, same noise vibration foam. So I think we're good there. I really think we're good there. I think we're covered. And, um, uh, and the more and more that this technology and substrates and magnesium and aluminum become more and more mainstream, uh, more everybody's going to synchronize toward three or four um, manufacturers like 3M, Lord Fuser, or SEMA, or SEM. Sorry, SEMA. SEMA is an event. SEM. And those will be the three um, manufacturers of, of choice by the, menu, by the OEs. Okay? So uh, they'll all be using the same uh, tools, equipment, and uh, substrates. Um, won't it be impossible to repair or learn all these procedures for different techs, different material? That's what all data is there for, man. All data, I kid you not, is the Google for auto repair. When, you, when, when I'm helping my daughter with her French immersion homework, and I have absolutely no idea what this paragraph says, I just go to Google Translate. And you can literally treat OEM procedures the exact same way in all data. Hey, I'm a big fan of Mitchell, but their Mitchell Tech Advisor doesn't allow you to do that. It doesn't identify who's a, who's a, a static and um, uh, who's a dynamic calibration. Lots and lots of stuff missing there, all right? And I've, I've asked them to improve their product because we want to help you more. But right now, for my network, I need to guide them down to the, uh, the well of all data because that's going to be the healthier drink for them to have right now. Uh, Ottawa Airport, I don't know if it was uh, Ronnie or Cole, but thank you guys very much for that question. Does anybody else have any questions, other questions, comments, or concerns that they want to drop in the chat? Hey, don't you be sorry, man. Those were awesome. Rob. Rob from Simplicity Car Care Berry. With multiple scanners on the market, is it difficult to choose one um, that is a multi-vehicle and best suited for us? Um, has Simplicity invested, uh, investigated which one, which one would be best for the network? We have. I have four scanners at our East York location at Greenwood and Danforth. That's the location where we beta everything. Okay, so I'm going to be very honest with you. Aztec, uh, and you can all Google or YouTube this stuff, Aztec is the best, number one. But it's also $169 for a priest, U.S. For now, they may have changed it to Canadian, but still. $169 for a pre-scan, $69 for a post-scan, and you may be charged more for a dynamic calibration we're getting problems with half an hour pre and post scan how you want to go and give the insurance company a 350 dollars bill for doing the calibration in-house right so aztec is the go-to but they're too expensive and i've told aztec many many years ago that if they just aligned their pricing they would have lost up north america when it comes to calibration and scanning um, number two is the Mitchell product. Um, I just told you how I'm not too too thrilled with Tech Advisor, but I'm very much thrilled with their MD350 and MDOE. Okay, uh, for those who are interested in having these products tested in their in their stores, um, I can also set that up for you. All you need to do is just send me a quick email stating Dominic, I want the Bosch or Mitchell products to be tested. Um, there is also all data, all data has an OE tool, which they confirmed is certified by the OE manufacturers. 
and it requires nothing more than OBD connection, okay? And then last but certainly not least, there is the launch. The launch can pre and post scan everything, but I'm sorry, I can only count on 20 to 30 percent of dy dynamic calibrations being done. So, with if you have a launch, chances are you're sending the car out for more scans or more calibrations than you'd like to. And for those who are saying, no, I don't, Dom, it's being done in house. You are misconstruing what a post scan and a calibration is. Okay. So, uh, Rob, I hope I've answered your question. It was pretty long-winded answer, but I'll summarize again. Aztec is the best. If you find out how to get the market to pay for it, um, I would put it in every store. MD350 or MDOE, supplied by Mitchell, is my go-to. Um, you also have All Data, which is another beautiful tool, and it can be integrated directly with your OEM procedures. And then uh, bottom of the barrel is the launch, where it'll do 100% of your scanning, but 20 to 30% of your dynamic calibrations. Uh, Ottawa Airport, um, have you looked at the, the Maxi system or Pro system? I have not, um, but now that you've mentioned it, I will YouTube it. And if I have any questions, I'm, taking, I'm going out on a limb and saying that you've used it before. Um, I will YouTube it and, uh, and Google search it. And if I have any questions at all, I will get with you. Um, but I have not, and I'm just jotting it down to make sure that I do review it. And if I think that it's something that's shocking that I haven't seen before, I might include it in next week's webinar. Maxi System Research. Thanks for throwing that out there, Ottawa. Does anybody else have any questions, comments, or concerns about uh, digitization, vehicle technology, and asking yourself, are you ready? I ask myself if we're ready every single day. I ask, um, I ask myself if my collision center is ready. I ask if our collision centers are ready. I ask myself if the industry is ready. I don't know, but all I can do is manage what I can control. And what I can control is making sure that we become a little bit better tomorrow than we were today. And that all starts with research. So I gave you guys five different areas, IOT, AI, flash ML, EV, AV, 5G, Google this stuff, YouTube it on your own, okay? And if you learn any more from it, then uh, the world is not ready, man. I don't even think the engineers of the vehicles are ready. I don't even know if they thought if, if they thought through this entire process before they go and start launching IoT into uh, the 2020 Chevy Cruze. You're right. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this webinar. Um, you know, and I hope that this webinar gave you an opportunity to break away from this craziness that we're going through day to day. Um, I wanted really to make this as educational as possible and give you guys a break um, from the day to day, what we're seeing, what we're not seeing, and what we're hearing. Like I turn on CP24 or Global National and for five minutes, I've already heard enough. There's enough negativity for one day, man. Um, so I'm going to, in myself and my operations team. Uh, I know that Raj, Mike Lothar, Mike Tao, Paolo, they're all working right now as we speak on content. I'm bringing you guys some killer webinars because I'm going to tell you one thing. We're all going to be ready to come out of this thing. And when we do, and everyone's trying to start that engine and get it from zero to 100, we're already going to be at 80. And then we'll put this thing in the hyperdrive We'll garner a lot of attention from a lot of insurance companies, and we'll do things, the three R's, the right things, the right way at the right time. And guess what? We'll also make money while we're doing it. <laughs> Amen. Absolutely. All right. Um, if there's no other questions, comments, or concerns, you guys got to know that I love every single one of you. I thank you so much 
for your dedication, your discipline to the big four and learning summit. And I thank you also for giving me the opportunity to do this. If it wasn't for your partnership, I'd probably be here sitting here talking to myself. Okay. So thank you very much for your partnership, your business. We're all on the path of being better tomorrow than we were today. And you let me know how I can help you do that. I am always open to any suggestions, comments, questions, concerns. Give me, and you know what I'd love? Let me know what you want to hear. What is it you want to see from these webinars? Is there an area of the business that we haven't covered? Is there an area outside of the business that we haven't covered? You let me know. And I will work with my team to make sure we do everything that we can. I apologize I missed the first half, Dom. Is this thing being recorded? Absolutely, brother. Of course it's being recorded. Kevin from West Hill, probably cranking up some estimates, helping Sammy on the shop floor. Love you guys too, man. You guys are the greatest out there, man. You guys are really killing it in Scarborough, and we do appreciate that. I appreciate everything that everybody's doing. And if there's anything else that you guys need, please let me know. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to get to work to making sure that I got some killer content for next Wednesday. And you'll be receiving a webinar for 2.0. Automotive digitization and technology. Are we ready? I don't know, man. You guys tell me. Hopefully we will be by the time this IoT stuff is coming to pick us up with vehicles that have no pedals and no steering wheels. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for your time, your dedication, your business, and your trust. And I look forward to doing this again soon, okay? Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.